Hi, I'm uh, Dr. John Dickinson, and uh, welcome to this video about how to run a Eucapnic Voluntary Hypertonia Challenge, otherwise known as an EVH Challenge. Okay, so if we're going to run an EVH Challenge, we need to send some information out to our participants. The first thing I recommend is you send them uh, an information sheet which talks about how to come off medication prior to coming in for the challenge, what to, te what to eat or drink before they come in, and also what type of exercise to do. Effectively speaking, an individual's got to, if you want to prove they've got some form of exercise induced asthma, they need to stop using inhalers before they come in. That means coming off things like Monte Lucas seven days before, Corticosteroids steroids three days before, long acting beta to agonist two days before, and short acting beta to agonist on the day of the test. The individual also needs to avoid taking caffeine within four hours of the test, and they also need to avoid high intensity exercise on the day of the test as well. On the day when the athlete turns up, get the signed informed consent form to make sure they understand what they're doing, they understand that they don't have to do it if they don't want to, and also they understand exactly what you're telling them to do. Then, before they start, you want them to get them to go through a health questionnaire. This will include general health questions and also specific information about the symptoms they get during exercise and also whether any environments make it worse or not. And that will just give you an idea as to what, what kind of individual you're dealing with and whether there's any issues that might actually stop you doing the EVH challenge before you start. Okay, so if we're going to run an EVH challenge, we need some equipment. The first piece of equipment you're going to need is a spirometer. Um, and as long as the spirometer measures force expiratory volume in one second, force by vital capacity, um, that's pretty much all you need to be able to run the, the uh, EVH challenge. However, if you can get hold of a digital uh, um, spirometer, you're going to be able to measure many more flow, flow volume uh, measurements, and that's going to allow you to provide more detail in your assessment. So the spirometer we've got here is a micromedical, micro lab spirometer, and this one plugs straight into our laptop, um, and we can run spirometry software through that. Um, We'll talk through actually how to run the spirometry uh, in the next part of the video. Now, this is our EVH kit. Um, so you, it, it demonstrates you actually put one together yourself. It involves a gas bottle, it involves a flow meter, a Douglas bag, some flexible tubing, and a dry gas meter. So we're just going to take talk you through each part of the kit. The first piece is the um, dry gas. This is the um, compressed gas cylinder. Now, the reason we're getting individuals to breathe compressed gas is because they're hyperventilating. And what we don't want to do is breathe off at too much carbon dioxide because if they do that, they're going to start feeling lightheaded and they're going to pass out. So we're going to stop that happening and they're going to breathe air out of this gas bottle here. Now, in the gas bottle, the, the mixture of air is 21% oxygen, 5% carbon dioxide with a, with, a nitrogen, with a nitrogen mix. And effectively, that will allow them to breathe as hard as you like for six minutes. Now, also, because it's coming out of the dry the uh, cylinder, the air is really, really dry. So by the time it reaches the mouth, it's around about 2% humi humidity, which makes the air really provocative, and which makes this, that's one of the reasons why this test is so sensitive. Now, from the gas cylinder, you've got a, a regulator on here where you can, uh, when, where you can um, regulate the amount of air that comes out of that gas cylinder. That's connected by a high pressure tube in to a flow meter. The flow meter allows us to know how fast the air is coming out of the gas cylinder. So when we set the, the rate of the, the breathing during the EVH challenge, we can use this flow meter to give an idea of how fast the air is coming out. As the air passes through the system, it goes through this flexible tubing to a Douglas bag, and this Douglas bag is acting as a reservoir. So any excess air that isn't breathed by your participant is being collected by this Douglas bag. And you can therefore make sure the individual is breathing as hard as you can, but if they're not, then the excess air gets caught, caught in here. Now, as the air travels through the system, the individual you sat here with the um, uh, Hans Rudolph two-way two valve, breathing here. So the air comes in here, they're breathing along, exhaled out, and it passes through here into the dry gas meter. Now if we've got a stopwatch running, we have a stopwatch running here, and the individual can see how much air they're breathing out as they're doing the test. So at the end of the first minute, we set them a target, and then so on for the rest of, for the, rest of the minutes. And so we're encouraging that individual to breathe as hard as fast as we can, using a dry gas meter to record how much air they're breathing out. Well, the first test we're going to do is baseline spirometry. What that's going to involve is the individual is going to do a maximal breath in to total lung capacity, 
and pop this mouthpiece in their mouth. They're going to breathe out as hard and as fast as they can for as long as they can so they get to residual volume and then keep the mouthpiece in their mouth and breathe back in as hard and as fast as they can until they return to total lung capacity. And then once we've got done that, as long as we've got a good test, we will then um, repeat that another two times to get a best, and we'll get a best of three. Okay, so now we're ready to start the actual EVH challenge. So we've got our best FEV1, which in this case is about three was 3.64. When we times that by 30, that's going to give us an approximate approximately 85% of the of the, of the participants' um, maximum voluntary um, ventilation. Now, if we times 3.64 by 30. If, and we round it off to the nearest 10, we're going to get 110 litres per minute. And that's what we're going to ask our participant to, to sit at for six minutes. Okay, so I've got my stopwatch here. I've got the gas ready to go. We've got our participant. So let's get breathing. Okay, so we're going to see the your way coming out here. I'm going to give you a countdown 3, 2, 1, and it's down to you to go for it. Okay, so 3, 2, 1. Nice, big, deep, strong breaths. That's great, really good. Nice big strong breath, brilliant. Excellent work. Let's keep this breath nice and big. When you've got your participant doing this, you want to make sure you give an encouragement all the time. It's usually the first time they've done this, and so it's, it's difficult for them to understand what they're doing. So sometimes the first minute can be a little bit lower than usual, um, but the main thing is you're asking to breathe as hard and fast as they can. Keep that going, last few breaths. Stop there. Excellent. Lovely. <coughs> okay? <coughs> Excellent. Okay, so if you want to have a little bit of a sip of water, that's fine. At this point, your participant is probably going to have really dry throat. It's okay for them to have a drink of water, that's not a problem. What we need to do now is we're going to measure lung function again in three minutes time. So we need to be ready, so we need to make sure all our uh, equipment's um, fine to get sterilised in a little bit, or we'll take it straight over to sterilisation, and then we need to measure our lung function uh, directly three minutes after we've finished. Okay, so three minutes after you've finished the EVH challenge when you need to start measuring your lung function again. And what you do is exactly the same thing you did, you've done before the EVH challenge in terms of measuring maximum lung function. So you're going to encourage the participants to breathe exactly how they did before that um, they've done the EVH challenge. So they need to do a nice big deep breath in, blast the air out, and then breathe back in as hard and as fast as they can. So if you want to have a go at that, Anna. Let me just press the button to get this going. Okay, so a nice big deep breath in and really go for it. That's it, all the way up. Now keep that going, keep it 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 going, and nice big deep breath in. Lovely. That's good. Okay, so after we've um, done the EVH challenge and measured our, our flow volume loops um, after the EVH challenge and then after we've taken inhalers, we can generate our report. And what that report looks like is a little bit like this. So we've got our, what we're most interested in is forced expiratory volume in one second. At rest for this particular individual, um, 3.64 litres, which is 25% better than what it should be for height and age. And it's quite common that athletes uh, might present with um, good uh, lung function at rest. But what we're interested in is does it change after we've done um, six minutes of hard breathing. And in this case it goes from 3.64 down to 3.26, which is still above predicted values, but it's a drop of 10%. If you actually look at the amount of, of air she, uh, the, uh, the participants that have been able to breathe out, it hasn't changed. So it's still a 0% change there. So the actual ratio has gone from 84% of air, of air breathed out in one second down to 75%. So we've lost efficiency in terms of how much air we can shift in one second. That's dropped 10%, and what we see after we've taken sabutamol, it's gone back up to 3.55, which is within 2% of our baseline measure, and so we can see that reversibility. 
and that's what we're looking for to demonstrate an individual has um, exercise induced bronchoconstriction or has the potential to have exercise induced bronchoconstriction after exercise.